fighter pilot eight. Squadron leader, Mike Ling, the Red Arrows. All right, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm squadron leader Mike Ling. I'm Red 10, the supervisor with the Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, who you can see are just lining up on the runway for a display takeoff. Mission in for Red One. Okay, that's the waiting time there. Uh, the weather's lovely and I'm really looking forward to a great show. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Roy check. Hey, 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 six, six, eight, nine. Display takeoff coming left. Six. Nine radio. Nine. Smoke. Lights off. Go. Power. Parking brake. Red One, welcoming everybody here to the Farber International Air Show. The nine headlights come on. All nine Rolls-Royce Adore engines power up to full power. The front three aircraft, Reds 1, 2 and 3, reduce the power a little bit. Directly behind, Reds 4 and 5. And at the very back, Reds 6, 7, 8 and 9. They release the brakes. Immediately, one second later, reds four and five roll, two and a half seconds, red six to nine. Those engines now accelerate the aircraft. They're already doing around 100 miles an hour, and they'll be lifting off at about 150 miles an hour. So, red one, two, and three lift off. Red 4 and 5 top airborne, red 6, 7, 8, 9, the will tuck in to form the box formation as they perform this display takeoff. The idea of this takeoff is to get all nine aircraft together from the runway as quickly as possible. So shortly you'll hear red 6 called turn. You can already see that red 4 and 5 have joined the front three. And after he calls turn, the formation will come left and they will form our Diamond 9 formation. They go off to our left to form up. The pilots will now trim their aircraft, they'll prime their smoke systems and get ready to start the display in just a couple of minutes time. So I'll talk you through what you're about to see. Well, 2014 is a very big year for the Red Arrows. It is in fact the Red Arrows 50th display season. And in that time, the team has performed over 4,500 public displays in 56 countries. We're very proud and honored to represent the very best of British at home and overseas. The team was formed in 1964 with the first season in 1965 and it was an amalgamation of a number of other teams. The Yellow Jacks, the Red Pelicans and the Black Arrows were popular display teams in that era but it was decided that only one full-time display team should be formed so they formed the Red Arrows. Well, as our official title, the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team suggests, we belong to the Royal Air Force. Today the Royal Air Force's purpose is twofold, it's to protect the nation and its interests 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year. It's also there to provide the nation with choices during times of crisis. We do this by using our fast jet fleet to deliver combat air, or using our new air mobility fleet, fleet to support ongoing operations or deliver humanitarian aid across the globe. The Red Arrow's purpose is to demonstrate the strength and relevance of the Royal Air Force, most importantly through demonstrating the excellence of its people and the world-class training they have received. The Red Arrows are a military unit of around 120 personnel. We have a command structure that is broadly similar to that of all the other fast jet squadrons in the Royal Air Force. We are commanded by Wing Commander Neil Fraser. He is in charge of all of the administrative safety and disciplinary parts of the team and he's a Harrier pilot by trade, he's called on Red 11 and he'll fly our 11th jet if we take 11 away with us. 
He then commands 10 pilots, including myself, the nine display pilots you see now, myself the supervisor. And we wear red suits, the pilots wear red suits. But it's the support sections underneath us that wear blue suits. They outnumber the reds by about 10 to 1. They're primarily made up of engineers, but we do have photographers, suppliers, administrators and drivers who help represent the spectrum of ground trade within the Royal Air Force. It's the guys in blue that work hard, very hard throughout the year to make sure our busy season is a success. So there are lots of the blues here at Farnborough. So if you please see one of the blues, they're in a blue flying suit with a red arrow crest on their arm and a Union Jack on their left chest. Please pat them on the back and pass on our thanks for their efforts. They really do work hard to make sure our season is successful. Well, we have three types of display we can fly depending on the weather. Our full display allows looping maneuvers. That needs a minimum cloud base of around 5,500 feet. If it's lower than that, we get our rolling show, which means we can fly our formation barrel rolls. Just getting a bit of banter from Red 2. He's just saying the Met Office weren't exactly correct with their forecast this afternoon. We were expecting a flat show, which would be our our low show with the weather, but it's glorious, it's blue sky, so red one's just said we're going to get a full display. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team for 2014, the Red Arrows! They arrive in big battle formation, that big V-shape at 400 miles an hour with the jets around 20 feet apart. You'll now see them collapse to around 6 feet apart as they form short diamond formation at the top of this loop at 6,000 feet. They're led by Red 1 squadron leader Jim Turner. It's Jim's third and final year as the team leader. He is a former Jaguar pilot who's very experienced in the display world. Having displayed the Jaguar, spent three years previously with the Red Arrows, and more recently he has spent three years as the official advisor to the Royal Saudi Air Force's display team. Red That's Red One voice. Two and three acknowledge the move to Eagle. They do so with very metronomic cadence in their voices. The idea is that as they count four in their heads, the pilots extend their air brakes. And on counting six, they retract their air brakes, which means that all three aircraft on each wing drop back in time to form Eagle. And in from the right now, you'll see the Eagle roll. As the jets go upside down, boys and girls, the pilots will see you waving. Give them a big wave. Well, when the Red Arrows first formed, the aircraft they used was known as the Fallen Nat. That was the advanced jet trainer in the Royal Air Force in that era. In 1976, the Hawker Sydney Hawk entered service, and in 1980, the Royal Air Force started using the Hawk in the aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, which is the same aircraft you can see today. The Hawk is a very successful aviation export. It's been sold to over 19 countries across the world, and it still continues to impress in its guise as advanced jet trainer. Smoke goes off to the front rows. Four and five have moved forward slightly. And this is now the shape of the Russian fighter jet, the Su-27. They're about to reverse the turn. The NATO code word for the Su-27 is flanker. Well, they're about to form a very wide shape now, so Red 8 and 9 will move to the outside of the formation. And from Red 9's left wingtip through to Red 8's right wingtip, the formation will now measure 100 metres or 300 feet wide. To enable the formation to be moved as one, the outside pilots really have to anticipate their control input. They do that by using the cadence in Red One's voice command. But now, coming in from the left, this very wide shape, they're going to be putting on some very patriotic red, white and blue. If we can please have a big round of applause as they show you Phoenix. 
right wing now is the first of our two first year pilots for this year. He's read to Flight Lieutenant Stu Campbell. Stu is a former instructor on the Takano aircraft teaching basic fast jet training. He was also the Takano display pilot. He then went on to fly the Tornado GR4 operationally. Out to the right, the team have formed our trademark shape and in true 70s style all nine jets will now smoke in the diamond roll. Another big wave, boys and girls! When we fly our formations with the odd-numbered pilots on the left-hand side, the even-numbered pilots fly on the right-hand side, and in their three-year tour with the team, the pilots will generally start at the front near the leader, and as their proficiency improves, they move further back. On the leader's left wing now is Red 3, Flight Lieutenant Joe Hurston, who is our other first year pilot this year. Joe is a former Hawk flying instructor, and operationally he flew the Tornado GR4 also. In fact, Joe is the only pilot on the team who has flown this version of Hawk, the Hawk T-Mark 1. He's also instructed on the Royal Air Force's new advanced jet trainer, the Hawk T-Mark 2. Out to the left, the smoke goes off as they formed a very iconic shape. They roll out towards us now, for the Concorde loop. Pulling up at 4G at 400 miles an hour. The shape starts to change again and as they reach the top of this loop at 6,000 feet or a mile above us, you'll see Reds 2, 3 and 4 move forward. Reds 8 and 9 also move forward to form a feathered arrow shape. At the top of this loop, the jets have slowed down to about 150 miles an hour. The D's backed off to around 1G. But as they come down the other side, they're accelerating now back to 400 miles an hour. The G's building up to 4G as they show us a feathered arrow, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we call it Fred. Well, that's the end of the first half of the Red Arrows display, ladies and gentlemen. So far, you've seen all nine aircraft together performing close formation aerobatics. We're now going to change the tempo of the display. We'll be splitting down into sections of two, three, four, five, or seven aircraft, and we're going to show you some more dynamic manoeuvring. At the front of the formation are Reds 1 to 5. We call them Enid, after Enid Blyton's famous five. And at the back are Reds 6 to 9, known as Jippo. Jippo was the nickname of the gentleman who led the back of four aircraft when the Red Arrows started flying nine ship displays formally in 1968. You can see now Reds 8 and 9 have started to move out to form that wide Phoenix formation again. If you've got a camera, it's definitely now time to get it ready. They roll out directly towards us to start the second half of the display. Reds 1 to 5, 8 and 9, pull up in Phoenix. Keep your eyes on the synchro pair with the blue smoke underneath. This is the palm split. changing from blue on the left hand side pitching up now is red six leader of the synchro pair flight lieutenant james mcmillan it's james's third and final year in the team he actually grew up in new zealand but he transferred to the royal air force in 2002 and became a hawk flying instructor and harrier pilot on the left he's chased down by red eight looking right we have red seven with the smoke on followed by red nine 
So these four aircraft are going to be closing now at 850 miles an hour. Get your cameras ready as they perform the amazing Gippo Pass. They leave their smoke on, they're turning away from us now at 60 or 6 times the force of gravity. That means everything in their bodies weighs 6 times more than normal. Those pilots are working hard to counter the G-force as they roll out towards this to fly the cyclone. Out to the left now to find Enid. The wings of Enid drop down to form an inverted V shape. And if you look to your right, the lone jet is Red 9, who's now going to fly the goose. Typhoon, the Royal Air Force's new multi-role combat aircraft that you'll see display this afternoon. Enid climbs steeply to our right, slips directly to the front to find the synchro pair. They pull up at 500 miles an hour, five times the force of gravity. They reach a height of 7,000 feet. The smoke comes on as they get ready to draw a heart. Now keep your eyes looking to the top left of the heart. Here comes Red 8 with a final touch. Red 8 is Flight Lieutenant Martin Pert. He's another third year pilot with the team. And he flew the Hawk and the Harrier before joining the Red Arrows. Ladies and gentlemen, Red 6, 7 and 8 with their heart and spear. Left and right again, the synchro pair are now going to be coming back towards us, descending to their display height of 1, 000, 100 feet. And they'll be closing at 800 miles an hour. The next call you'll hear is each of the pilots calling threshold. This means they've reached a geographic point on the ground, which is their point from which they've told each other they're continuing with the manoeuvre, and they're going to cross in front of us in this opposition barrel roll. Camera's ready. Now look to the front where you'll see Enid have been joined by Reds 8 and 9. They pull up into a loop in a seven ship Vixen formation. Red 1 now twists them through 90 degrees in a quarter clover. Now get your cameras ready. This is the vertical break. Left and right again now for the synchro pair. This time red six comes from our right and red seven from our left. They're closing at 800 miles an hour. They're going to cross three times in opposing 360 degree six G turns. Get ready now for the carousel. Pilots are pulling 6G in each cockpit and they're going to cross three times. Watch how they swap the smoke colour 
and each of these three crosses using the individual colour control buttons on each of the aircraft control columns. Now look to your right, 45 degrees, just above the Cream Flight Safety International Building. in a shape called Leader's Benefit. They're going to draw a red, white and blue snake like shape of smoke in the sky as they fly the Python. benefit shape is Red 4, he's flight lieutenant Ollie Parr, he's a second year pilot with the team. Ollie is a former Tornado GR4 pilot, he has also spent the tour as a full flying instructor at Royal Air Force Valley on the island of Anglesey in North Wales where we teach our advanced flying students. Keep looking to the left hand side now to look for Jippo. Jippo, go! Red 6 and 7 pitch up to roll upside down. This is the corkscrew. Seven there working hard, flying his jet only eight feet away from Red Six, doing it while he's upside down. Now look to the left to find the five headlights of Enid. The inside pilots perform tight match rolls to the outside of the formation in the rollback. Finish their rollbacks. Keep your eyes to the right hand side and look again for the four aircraft of Gippo. Once again, six and seven go upside down. Now, eight and nine will match their formation underneath in the mirror pass. Boys and girls, give the synchro pair a wave as they fly past upside down. gives the command for the formation to widen as they form a four ship square card formation. Now look right 45 degrees. Directly above the Cream Flight Safety International building again, red one to four form a box formation. Now rolling around them a dozen times is red five. Coming right now. Camera's ready for the twister. year with the team. He is a former Hawk flying instructor and operationally he's flown both the Harrier GR9 and the Tornado GR4 before donning his red suit last year. Now directly above the control tower you'll see Jippo. Red 8 and 9 pitch up to roll around 6 and 7. Camera's ready 
for the Jippo fight. On the right hand side is number seven, Zebra number two, flight lieutenant Mark Lawson. It's Mark's second year with the team. His background is solely on the Tornado GR4, where he spent three tours flying the jet and flew over Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan. And also became a qualified weapons instructor. Well, the synchro pair are now descending for their final maneuver of the display. These are the double rolls. Please, a big round of applause for the Synchro pair! Now, look directly to the front for Enid, who are being joined by Reds 8 and 9 for the display's finale. Just to the right of the control tower, they're back in seven ship Vixen formation, and this is the Vixen break. We are the Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows. Red one puts his smoke on, he's going to cover all nine aircraft back together as they recover to land here on runway 24. And you'll see that break in just a couple of minutes time. Well I've got your attention, if I can direct you to our website which is raf.mod.uk slash reds. You'll get lots of extra information about the team, including the picture of the team and our 50th display team. On Facebook we're RAF Red Arrows and on Twitter we're at RAF Red Arrows. They're coming back in a, a little bit of time, just to our right-hand side. They'll be in that big battle shape, that big V in which they started the display. And you're going to see a big battle right-hand break, where you'll see them peel off one by one, sequentially reds one through nine, as they pitch up to roll out downwind, and then individually land on the runway. Well, as the jet took off, you might have seen that we have a very special paint scheme for this year. That is our 50th anniversary tail fin. If you'd like to buy a print with that tail fin, the squadron print, it's a hand-drawn image of the Hawk, side profile. It's been hand-signed by all of the Red Arrows pilots. These are available in limited quantities from the Red Arrows tent, which is at the back of the most eastern grandstand. Three red and white inflatable igloo-type tents. If you'd like to buy one, some of our blues are there, because you're available to go and see them. With £10, they'll trade that in for a print for you. So up to the right, you can see the team in big battle shape. I'll let you listen in to their commands as they run in. So the idea now is that red one will break, and then in two second intervals, the other pilots will pitch up. So from 350 knots or 400 miles an hour, the pilots will then pitch up at around five and a half to six G. Then they'll enter a snap right-hand turn to roll out downwind at 200 miles an hour, which enables them to lower their undercarriage. And as they turn final to land, they'll accelerate again to around 100 and 50 miles an hour. So out to the right, the smoke's going to come on. Right, have Now we can stick with the white now. When you can already see red one at the front has slowed down, his undercarriage is about to come down, and then they'll turn final to land. Now, as I said, the formations are flown with the odd guys on the left being even numbered pilots on the right, same as when we land on the runway. The odd numbered pilots land on the left hand side, the even numbered pilots land on the right hand side. And when you see red one approach the touchdown point, you'll see he's going to put a little slip of white smoke out. The idea of that is it gives an indication to the following aircraft what the wind and therefore the drift is doing 
and therefore what's going to happen to his weight turbulence and jet wash so they don't know how they're going to fly their final turn with the wind from the left as it is today the guys landing on the left will land slightly shallower angle the guys on the right because they've got the effect of the jet wash and the weight turbulence of the leading aircraft will land at a slightly steeper angle so watch now red one's coming in to land and he'll put a little bit of a white smoke out and you'll see it drift as we look from right to left as the pilot's looking from left to right. So what I did yesterday, as the guys taxi past, I got a big round of applause for them all. So this is Red One, squadron leader, Jim Turner. Giving you a wave back there, ladies and gentlemen. Coming in now, one of our first year pilots, Red Two, Flight Lieutenant Stu Campbell. Now, just approaching the central point is Red 3, Flight Lieutenant Joe Hurston. Red 4 approaching now is Flight Lieutenant Ollie Park. Just touching down now, another bit of white smoke as the boss's smoke had gone. Here he is, he's the crazy twister pilot, Red 5, Flight Lieutenant Steve Morris. Touching the deck now is Red 6, leader of the Synchro Pair, Flight Lieutenant James McMillan. And his Synchro wingman, another blip of smoke from him, is Red 7, Flight Lieutenant Mark Lawson. Red 8 now, Flight Lieutenant Martin Pert. And just touching down now, last but by no means least, is Red 9, Flight Lieutenant Mike Child. I know Mike's family here today, so a big hello to them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. The pilots will taxi back now. They're going to shut down. Our team of blues on the other side of the runway, where you can see our spare jet will service the aircraft. They'll put more fuel in, more diesel in for our smoke systems ready for our display here tomorrow. But I'd like to wrap up by thanking everybody for the support they've shown the Red Arrows over the last 50 display seasons. For now, I thank you very much for watching and for listening. Enjoy your afternoon. Please put some sun cream on, drink lots of water, and have a very enjoyable time. All the best from the Red Arrows. Mike, thank you very much indeed. And please, when you do the outbreak, the outbreak, thank them very, very much indeed. That was a superb display. And uh, that's really good. They always have a debrief after they land and uh, mop up, as they do every show. And uh, I know Mike will hand our thanks to the crew and the whole team. And please also thank the Blues for getting them ready for flight. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, while uh, Stratton mentions the Blues, can we please have a big round of applause for the Red Arrow support sections, without whom the team would not be able to fly. For the Red Arrow Blues! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.